My work is more concerned with memory because uh, what is happening is because of the intensity and the speed of events, people tend to forget. My work kind of documents and reminds people of what is happening and why it is happening. Um, so it's not more of art as, in, as much as a historic documentation also. What happened is that people were demonstrating on the streets and I could not be, I'm a very quiet person, I don't know how to scream. And, uh, and I saw all the different people contributing to the revolution by helping the wounded, taking people out of prison. Um, so all sorts of social support was going around the revolution. And my only contribution was to paint something on the walls, to be an artist, to, be, to do what I can do. This is, as a profession, this is what I can do. I'm an artist. So um, I started painting, I started taking the no and adding a message to it and painting it on the streets in Cairo. And uh, as a statement for me, the point was to um, communicate the word no in a thousand different ways, because in Arabic we have a saying, uh, a no and a thousand times no. If you want to confirm a no, you say no and a thousand times no. So that artwork was to physically collect a thousand different no's on many items produced under Islamic patronage or Arab patronage in the past 1,400 years. And just by having these thousand no's next to each other, um, uh, looking at them, not even knowing where they came from, even though I documented where they came from. They came from uh, carpets and mosques and uh, lanterns and uh, woodwork. And all this is documented in a publication with their date and the name of the patron. And so you know, I, I knew where these letters came from, even though my viewer didn't. Um, so th that idea gives you so much power to know that you have so much history behind you uh, as a culture, uh, that, that I was able to come up with a thousand variety of just one letter. And, and only writing can do that. And that's why I'm so interested in the written word and its history. Because the, the written word has the power in its shape to communicate to you whether, as you know, we have a very high illiteracy rate in the Arab world. So what I write sometimes is not understood. Um, they can't read what you write because they can't read. So, so um, it's sometimes futile to write if you want to get the message across. And some artists paint and they use visuals to communicate. But I still think there's something magical about Arabic calligraphy that it communicates with the uh, people who live in the Arab world at a visceral level. And the minute they see beautiful script, they, understand, they don't need to read it, but they can understand that it's important and it's valuable because the Qur'an has been for centuries written with beautiful handwriting. So the population, the masses, directly associate beautiful handwriting or beautiful calligraphy with tradition, with where they come from, with their origin. So that's why the written word is, is, and researching and understanding the written word is very important for me. And to me, that was a, a, an awakening. It was, a, it was a, a realization that you have so much behind you. I, do, I don't feel that history necessarily needs to be a burden uh, because it depends on how you look at history, uh, how you perceive it and how you translate it. Um, if, if you want to consider history a burden, then it will be, and, and you are free to lose it. But, but where do you go? How can you move forward if you don't know where you came from? If you don't understand your background, you don't understand your heritage, and you don't understand your history, how can you properly move forward? Because with, with the globalization, we have adopted the modes of the West. We have followed, complied, um, been colonized. Uh, I'm imitated their art, but did, this, did it get us anywhere? Did we reach any solutions, any human solutions? It, we, we, every time we tried, we hit a wall. 
whether in art, poetry, writing, we hit a wall. At that point in time, it was an urge. It was there. There was no after. I was. No, you don't think of the afterthought or the repercussions of what you are doing. You just feel the urge of going down and contributing in any way you can. Um, if my work inspired anybody or brought a good thought to anybody's head, I'm 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 very happy for that. But our work gets erased very quickly mm -hmm. on the street, and that's why. The internet as a platform is very useful because even if the message is erased on the street, you will still have the chance of having it communicated in the digital sphere. And this is the, this is the game changer now, that the government can resist you and cover you and try to um, hide what you want to communicate. But with a camera and an internet connection, it's a completely different ball game now. I believe that art can change lives. It's, it's, it is a very powerful tool. It's a therapy. In, in some civilization, art is used to cure you from, uh, from a disease. So it is a very powerful. It's not just, it should not be a luxury. And this is the point. This is why artists go down to the street. Because we believe that art should not be exclusive. Because art has the power of influencing lives on, on any levels, and it could be perceived by everybody on, on, on different levels, and they can relate to your message in different ways and interpret it in their own way. And you could potentially help someone um, on, on a very basic human level to live better, to think better, to aspire, to even dream. So it's, it's uh, I really think that the more there's the more art there is in the public sphere the better the more civilized the better um, people can go about their lives if they're surrounded by beauty and positivity there's no point uh, th there's no way that uh, that their lives will not be impacted and this is why people go down to the street. In our case, we, we're not even trying to instill beauty yet. We're not up to that level. We're only trying to communicate ideas to society about change because we believe in change and we believe in art as a tool for change. So I hope we will reach the phase when we, where we will have the luxury of communicating with art as beauty to change lives. We are still on survival mode. like flowers they're beautiful but they don't live for a long time so why why should artwork not be an experience if you're lucky enough to be passing by that street on that day to see the work then you're lucky if not then next time it's not a problem so it's uh, there's something charming about um, and very related to life, because around us, life is very much like that. We take things for granted because they're there. Yeah, it's like what happened with the Islamic Museum. It's there, we trusted it's there, the collection is safe, I can study it with my students, and then you wake up in the morning and it's no longer there. It's not there. Mm -hmm. It's not something we can take for granted and keep forever. Mm -hmm. So, and this is something we have to live with every day. Mm -hmm. It's our reality. So why should our art be permanent? It is the right way to communicate for it's the it's the language of the time now and it's when you lose hope in everything that you go down to the street and this is what happened with artists they lost hope in institutions, they lost hope in the government, so they took to the street. Their only hope is the people. And this is, the pe this is who you work for. This is the people who you paint for.
It's their minds that you want to influence. It takes time to, to create change. And um, new ideas are always uh, opposed. It's normal because we are, as humans, we're comfortable with normality. We don't like change uh, that is drastic. And we like our comfort zone. We like our comfortable couch and the same people we see all the time and hear all the time. So it's difficult to create change in, in, in the minds of people who have been um, um, accustomed to their, to their way of life. But we always hope to tr keep trying. Enlightenment is, uh, is not selective. It doesn't say, oh, I will only hit the young, or I will only hit the old, or I will only hit the poor. Or You can't box um, an idea. It, it's free to travel into any mind it wants to. In, in my case, I am a woman um, who has a certain level of education, and I'm very lucky to have coming from my part of the world. And I have the ability to communicate the ideas that I feel are relevant to where I come from. I might not reflect all of my society. I definitely do not represent uh, all uh, the people where, where I live. People are very different, extremely different from, from me. But I share uh, their dreams and I share their hopes. And we might, sometimes we are a very small group who still believe in change. And sometimes we influence society and we are a much bigger group. So the size of the people keep changing. People keep coming in and going out. But some people keep dreaming. And this is what's important. It's not important where they're coming from, whether they're young and old, or they're Muslims or not, or they're poor or rich. What's important is that they dream and they keep dreaming of a better future. And society is not driven by people who are pragmatic and realistic. It's always driven by the crazy ones, the dreamers. So, yeah, I, I'm hoping that we can grow the circle of dreamers in our societies. The ideas are there, and this is what's important.